Shalibhadra. Once upon a time, there lived a poor woman and her son in a small village. One day, there was a festival in the village, and all the kids, including the poor boy, were playing together. After playing, all except the poor boy started to eat kheer, or rice pudding, that they had brought with them. The poor boy did not have kheer to eat. He felt bad and ran home to his mother. He asked her if she would make some kheer for him since all the other children were eating it. His mother said that she could not make kheer and told him to eat whatever she had cooked. He started crying and insisted on having kheer. His mother could not bear to see him cry. So she went to a neighbor's house and borrowed some milk, sugar, and rice and made kheer for her son. She poured the kheer into a dish and left to bring some water from the well. As the boy was about to start eating, he heard the words, Dharmalab, meaning, May you be blessed with spirituality, usually spoken by Jain sadhus and sadvis when they arrive at a lay person's house for gochari. He saw a Jain sadhu at the door. Without hesitation, the hungry boy invited the monk in and offered him the kheer. He poured all the kheer from his plate into the monk's container. He was happy that he could offer this to the monk, even though nothing was left for him to eat. That night, he had a terrible stomach ache. His mother tried to cure it, but nothing helped, and he died later that night. His good intentions and his pious action helped him earn good karma. In his next life, he was born as Shalibhadra in a very rich family. His life was like being in heaven. His parents were Badra Shetani and Gobadra Shet. His father had renounced the world to become a monk when Shalibhadra was a young boy. His mother provided him all the comforts and luxury and never let him out of the palace for fear that he might become a monk like his father. It was said that even the heavenly beings were jealous of his lavish lifestyle. When he grew up, he was married to 32 beautiful women. One day, some merchants from Nepal came to town to sell some very exquisite diamond-studded shawls. They went to King Shrenik's court, where the king told them that he could not afford to buy such expensive shawls. The merchants returned from the court in utter disappointment, because they were hoping to sell some shawls to the king. The merchants also thought that since the king could not afford to buy them, None of his people would have enough wealth to buy their shawls in this city and decided to leave town. When Badra Shetani heard this, she sent a messenger and requested the merchants to visit her. The merchants were reluctant to go because they felt that if the king could not buy a shawl, how could any of his residents buy such expensive shawls? When they reached the house, Badra Shetani asked, How many shawls do you have? They said they had 16 shawls. Only 16, she said? I need 32 shawls because I have 32 daughters-in-law. The merchants thought she was joking, believing that she would not even buy one. She said, please take out those shawls. They took out the 16 shawls. The merchants were surprised that, without a second thought, she bought all 16 shawls. They were further astounded to see her tearing such precious shawls into two pieces in front of them and giving a piece to each of her daughters-in-law to wipe their feet. The merchants were stunned, but left with joy. The daughters-in-law used the pieces once and threw them away. One of the servants at Shalibhadra's palace knew the queen, so she took a piece of shawl for the queen. The queen was baffled, but happy that such rich people lived in her kingdom. She told King Shrenik about the shawls, and he was also very proud of such rich people upholding the good name of his kingdom. He invited Shalibhadra to his court to honor him. When Badra Shetani found out, she went to the king and told him that her son was very shy and invited the king to come to their palace. King Shrenik accepted the invitation and went to Shalibadra's palace. When King Shrenik reached there, he realized that his own palace was nothing compared to Shalibadra's palace. Badra Shetani offered him a place to sit and asked Shalibadra to come down to honor and respect the king. Shalibhadra did not know anything about the king or his kingdom and thought that there was some sort of merchandise that his mother wanted to show him. So he said, I do not want to see it, but you go ahead and buy it. His mother said, This is not merchandise. He is our king, our master, and you need to come down and greet and honor him. The word master started ringing in his ears. He wondered, Why should I have a master over me? I should be my own master. 
While thinking like this, he came down and paid his respect to the king, but he did not stay very long. He kept thinking that he was not a free person because there was someone like a king and master over him. He started to think about his father who had become a monk and the real meaning of life. He decided at that very moment to become a monk and told his family about his decision. His mother and all his wives tried to convince him to spend some more time with them. However, he was determined to renounce the world. Instead of renouncing all of his possessions at once, he decided to give them up over a period of a month and then become a monk. Shalibhadra had a sister named Subhadra. She was married to Dana. Dana had eight wives. One day, Subhadra was giving her husband Dana a bath and suddenly tears rolled down her face and fell on him. He asked her why she was crying. She told him that her brother had decided to become a monk. He was going to give up his possessions over a period of a month and then become a monk after that. Dana laughed and told Subhadra, Your brother is a coward. If he wants to become a monk, then why wait for a month? Subhadra was upset to hear that and told her husband, It is easier said than done. This sparked awareness in Dana's mind, and he told her, I am giving up everything I have right now to become a monk. Subhadra was taken by surprise. She thought that her husband was joking. However, Dana said, It is too late now. I am determined to become a monk. If you all want to join me, you are welcome. Seeing Dana's de determination, Subhadra and his seven wives decided to become nuns. Dana then went to his brother-in-law's palace and challenged him. Hey, Shalibhadra, if you really want to leave your family and possessions, then what are you waiting for? Join me. Shalibhadra heard him and accepted the challenge. He told his wives and other family members, I am leaving you all today. He went down to join his brother-in-law. His wives joined him too. All of them went to Lord Mahavir and accepted Diksha and became monks and nuns. After observing severe penances as monks, Dana and Shalibhadra were born as heavenly beings. From there, they would be born again as human beings and attain liberation.